Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Um, most of the markets are actually up a little bit higher this morning as we roll into the, e the ECP decision, which apparently got leaked yesterday. Uh, unconfirmed uh, sources saying it's going to be 50 billion dollars a month, so it'd be 600, um, uh, sorry, not, not dollars, but euros, or 600 million euros for the year, or 1 trillion euros for the next 18 months, depending on which way you look at it, because it's from now all the way into 2016. So that was a little bit less than what some commentators wanted. Euro dollar incredibly volatile, we'll know for sure today at 1.30 UK time. Uh, US 30, poking its head above 17.546, eyeing up 17. 738. We do have that death cross on the moving averages, which should put some traders off, but we have been whipsawing a lot last couple of sessions. All other technicals are neutral, bar the MACD that's close to posting a bullish crossover. So things could get quite interesting, and there's loads of economic data due out today. We'll come back to that in a second. UK 100 uh, doing very well. Lots of UK data out today. Looking at 67.71, and a break and close above that would uh, challenge all time highs of 69.06. Technicals looking good. These still are neutral, crossed the zero line with the MACD, um, but we are showing some deceleration as we get closer to 67.71, which as you can see has been quite an obvious support slash resistance level for uh, six months. Moving on to Japan 225, dollar yen has not really done a huge amount, thus Japan 225 has not either. Um, we are trading above both moving averages. We've got a bullish cross in the MACD. Potential resistance at 17,496. Um, obviously, we didn't have any uh, action on the Bank of Japan on Tuesday night, so um, there still is extra room for Japan to be five to to grow should they um, embark on more stimulus in the future. So things looking okay for Japan. Looking at dollar yen, uh, almost a bearish engulfing pattern, uh, though we closed a little bit. Uh, higher than at one point earlier on in the session. We're trading between two ranges right now. Dollar yen is kind of hard to get involved with right now because you're quite close to 17, uh, 117 spot 36 to 118 spot 99. We're almost trading inside two moving averages and the technicals are quite neutral, albeit the MACD is on the zero line. Um, looking at the pattern right here, we've got uh, move to the upside, move to the downside, move to the upside, move to the downside, move to the upside. We could be in the middle of some sort of descending triangle formation right here, um, depending on how things go. I'm guessing if you, uh, you know, Japanese yen has been uh, trying to fight back against its rampant US dollar strength for a little while. Uh, I think people still think the you know, longer term US, do, US dollar has got a lot to offer, but we really struggled in this uh, 117 to 121 range. So we could do the break out of either section for a choose, uh, choice of new direction. So moving on to Crudel West Texas, uh, again consolidating quite close to $70, uh, $47. Um, to be honest, not much else to report here. It's not been that exciting to trade the last couple of days. Uh, moving on to gold, gold's got a dozy formation. Uh, was unable to capitalize on this break above $1,300, um, but flat just now, uh, 1296 should still be acting as short-term potential resistance. It needs to get a break and close above that before we can re-challenge um, these higher levels. And we mentioned this before, your next level is probably around about here, around about th uh, 1322. And then after that, you do have the tip of this candle right here. So you're looking at 1345 as the next levels on gold. So finishing up with your dollar and cable, a lot of uh, quantitative easing has been priced into your dollar. It's obviously been a downwards trend for some time. Uh, if for whatever reason the ECB comes out with a figure greater than 50 billion euros a month, um, or more than the trillion dollars for, uh, to the end of 2016, then we'll get a little bit more action on your dollar. If it comes in as expected, or even slightly less, that's when you'll see. Well, comes out as expected, your dollar will probably do not that much because it's already priced in. If it comes in slightly less, you'll you'll see a slight slight bounces, and your dollar has been particularly volatile the last couple of uh, last couple of hours uh, into uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, one spot sixteen forty two is still the potential resistance. Longer term potential support still remains at one spot zero seven, but we're a long way from there right now. I'm finishing up with cable, um, which had staged a little bit of a comeback yesterday as the Bank of England voted unanimously to keep interest rates at zero. Um, there had been a seven to two split for some time, but now it's zero to nine, all in favor of keeping rates at zero. Had given a bit of a shot in the arm for um, cable, but that since uh, had the air let out of its, uh, of its sails and it's on the wrong side of potential uh, support slash resistance. One spot, 51.84. Longer term potential support, one spot 48.13. Uh, and I did draw this in before. 
Um, but we do have a level potentially. Uh, Maybe not so good there now. Actually, we'll see. We'll see. I think we'll see how things continue to pan out. But we do seem to have consolidation at one spot, fifty-one eighty-five. So economic data-wise, um, you've got public sector debt in the UK. You've got the ECB rate announcement. That's probably going to remain the same. It's one thirty UK time for the um, for, for, for the for the meeting statement, which will have any details of the um, of any QE. Keep your eye on Reuters news and obviously the chart forum as well uh, for details of that. You've got eurozone. CPI at three o'clock, which will be quite important for inflation aspects. This will be uh, interesting for people who are trading gold. And uh, you've obviously got the crude oil inventory reports, which people will be looking at. Friday, fair amount of data as well. You've got Chinese PMI, German PMI, Eurozone PMI, UK retail sales, and finishing up with the US home sales. So lots and lots of, uh, of data today and tomorrow should be quite an exciting session after half past one. So as ever, keep you on the chart form. I can see we've got a couple of clients here posting their own analysis in conjunction with uh, with Michael and Jasper. Make insights part of your going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.